What's up everyone, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar. I thought I would try something kind of different today. Uh, I took a picture of all my guitars the other night and I put it on social media and a lot of people were asking about certain guitars in my collection. And uh, it sounds weird to say collection now because back in the old days I had one or two guitars if I was lucky I had two. And so it seemed really strange to have more than two guitars in my life. But what I thought I would do is I would take a guitar from my collection and I would do a brutally honest breakdown of it, like my own type of review for it. So one guitar a lot of people were commenting on is this one right here. It's the BC Rich Mockingbird ST. So I ordered it knowing I wasn't getting the super expensive models, you know, the I think they're the USA models. So I decided on this, this is not a cheap guitar either. Even though it's made in Korea, it's still above a thousand bucks. So the first thing I noticed when I picked it up was it's got a little bit of weight to it. Some guitars that I've played in the past, they feel so light that I can run around the stage. Sometimes you forget you're even holding a guitar. This is not one of them. And I kind of like that because it sort of keeps you grounded in a strange way and I don't mind that feeling on stage. The next thing I noticed were all these dials and switches. I'll get the trim bar out of the way. So if you check it out, it looks very insane. Kind of like my Jaguar, you know, all of a sudden you see all these switches, you don't know what does what at first. And uh, for the first couple of weeks, I didn't know what they did. I just experimented and uh, set it where I thought it was cool. And then I looked it up later what each thing did. So the strangest thing about this guitar is that this main volume knob actually controls this bridge pickup. It's backwards from what you're used to. In my Explorer, it's, you know, it follows the direction of the pickups. So on the Explorer, it just goes with the front is this one, the back is this one for volume knobs. But this guitar, they have them switched around. I think it's kind of smart actually because most of the time people are gonna be using the bridge pickup. And so to reach down and have to go in between a bunch of knobs to always turn that one up and down can be a little bit strange. So I don't really mind that even though it took some getting used to. So right now, this three-way toggle switch is set to the bridge pickup. And I love the way this particular knob turns. Unlike my gem, which we'll talk about down the road, that's very stiff. This one's just loose enough to uh, feel good as you're turning it. It allows for really smooth, maybe some swells. I love doing that. I can't do that on the gem. And some guitars have such a loose volume knob that it opens and closes too easily. And then you're always paranoid on stage that it's slowly turning itself down or up as you're hitting it or brushing against it. So they nailed it with this volume knob. Okay, let's just move over. We have the three-way toggle switch. So that's gonna be bridge pickup. This is gonna be both. This is gonna be the neck pickup. And so just like I said, if we're on the neck, neck pickup, now this becomes our volume knob. Pretty strange, huh? And then this is a master tone knob. So no matter what pickup you're using, it's gonna affect it. I bet you they wanted to add a separate tone knob for each pickup and they just thought, nah, we can't add any more knobs to this beast. So far, so good. I love this configuration right here. And if it's all this guitar had, I'd be happy. But they go an extra step. So they throw in this five-way toggle switch, which just looks crazy, right? Some people like the look of the five-way toggle switch. Uh, it's, it's cool, I could take it or leave it. And really it just varies up the tone. So it's just different tones as you turn it. <laughs> Did you hear when I got back to where I was, it opened up and I'm like, I would just leave it at that if, if I had my choice. I don't know if that's position one or five, but I'm leaving it there. Maybe we could do what old radio stations used to say, uh, tune us in and rip off the knob. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll just eventually just take this off. So I have n I'm in no danger of changing it mid song. All right, now this part, I don't know. I think I might have my friend actually rewire this and get rid of these switches. So I know a lot of BC Rich uh, uh, fans are like booing me right now. But what I wanna do is get rid of these coil taps. Now, typically that's cool to have that option, you know, uh, check it out if I'm at my bridge pickup and I play a chord. This is gonna be your coil tap for that one. So if I move it, hear the buzz, that's an instant giveaway of a coil tap. Okay, so we have the tap happening. If I bring it back, there's that nice humbucker sound that I love. Okay, then we go to the neck pickup. Now that this one controls that one for the uh, coil tap. So if I go back to the bridge pickup, I can do the old coil tap test. I always... If Sweet Home Alabama sounds good with it, it's working. But I don't like the buzz, so let's go. I'm gonna call this thing a buzz eliminator, especially in this building. 
Okay, now the big mystery, what does this switch do then? It's actually a phase reversal switch. So right now I'm leaving it back, it sounds great. Let me go to the middle pickup so you can really hear it. Now if I hit the phase reverse, So I don't really see a huge use for that. It really thins it out. Uh, so check it out, this is funny. If I have all the switches pushed down, I get a pretty thick tone. As I switch these up, especially the phase, I have a completely different guitar sound. Listen how thin this sounds. Sounds a little bit like Wish You Were Here, right? Watch as I flick the switches back. Thick, thicker, thickest. So maybe you can kind of see why I wouldn't mind losing these switches. I don't think I'm really gonna have to coil tap this guitar very much for the kind of music I play. You never know though. So I might have my friend modify this guitar. I might rip off this knob and uh, completely, like I said, piss off all the BC Rich fans out there. I'm really afraid I'm gonna be playing live and all of a sudden I'm gonna look down and my switches are gonna be all messed up. Uh, that's just the uh, thing you gotta be careful when you start playing guitars live. You gotta make sure that uh, that you factor that into your live playing. The pickups are really sweet. As you heard in Clean Sound, we are gonna do some distortion sounds in a little bit, but we have the DiMarzio pickups and they're the deactivators and they're extremely hot. You know, when I play it with distortion, I have sustain for days and it's a nice rounded tone in Clean Sound. Front pickup. It's almost too big. By the way, I'm playing through a Fender Deluxe reverb amp, so it's already got a lot of body from the tubes and this just adds to that. So there are no worries from me about how thick this guitar can get, uh, unless I accidentally hit one of these weird switches. All right, one thing I have to tell you is that I already swapped out this bridge. I had a terrible incident uh, live. I know you guys are probably like, man, this guy has a lot of issues when it comes to playing live. I've just had so many things go wrong that I always, I'm always twice as careful. So it came with a Floyd Rose 1000 series bridge and I had one of those on another guitar before and during a set, the string just kept popping out of one of the saddles and I'm like, okay, I'm done with this. So I started buying more expensive Floyd Rose bridges. The originals to me are the best. I ended up getting a pro for this one just because I wanted to experiment a little bit with the more high-end Floyd Roses. I'm not gonna talk too much about this bridge because this video is more about the guitar, but I thought I'd let you know that I did that and that's why it looks a little different than possibly one that you're gonna get. All right, another strange thing is it came with these strap holders right here. And they're the kind that work with strap locks, but oddly enough, it didn't come with strap locks that you could use with this. So I think they assume, you know, you're gonna have those on your strap already and then you could just, this is ready to go. But uh, it would have been kind of nice if they would have included the strap locks if they were gonna put the knobs on there anyway. But not a huge deal for me. All right, this is an ebony neck, which is sweet. I don't think I have any other guitars that have ebony necks. And the frets feel great. There's nothing sticking out of the sides. I hate it when that happens. Uh, and you have to get it, you know, filed down. Never like that. 24 frets, which is really nice. There is a little bit of an issue though. I tried to play some Pantera the other day and I had this big stretch to do. And by the time I got to the uh, highest frets on the highest strings, my knuckles were hitting this part of the body and it kind of restricted my playing in a weird way. Now that's not gonna happen a lot because I'm barely ever doing these huge dime bag Daryl stretches, you know, when I'm playing heart or other bands, but uh, that was a problem. I thought that was kind of a strange issue. I really love it when guitars have metal output jacks because I don't have to replace the cheap plastic ones that tend to crack and break. So I was really happy to see that this one was actually a metal one. Came with locking nuts, which is always good whenever you're gonna use the trem bar. Now, even though I can't pull this one up, I can dip it down. This is really nice when it comes back perfectly in tune. These tuning pegs are really interesting. You wanna check them out? They feel very interesting, they look cool, and uh, they tune real smooth. I mean, I'm just waiting for something to cheap out on me. You know, sometimes when you get a guitar made in Korea or something like that, uh, the knobs go bad and things go funny, but so far so good on that. They feel real smooth and I've had no problems with them. I just, I really like the way they look. Now this headstock on the other hand, to me is a little bit gaudy. Like it's great, it's the 50th anniversary and all that, but uh, it pretty much takes up the whole headstock. 
And uh, I love the logo, like always, but this big 50 with a crown and everything like that, a little too much for me, but you know, I guess uh, I have bigger problems in my life. It looks black, right? But if you get really close, it's this really dark brown wood color. And I didn't notice that honestly until today when I turned on these really bright lights from my studio. I'm like, oh my God, that's so crazy. The new things that you learn about your guitars, even if you've had them for a while. So we heard some clean sound already and I already showed you how big this guitar can get. Let's see how it sounds when we put it through a distorted amp. So this will just be at the settings that I love, you know, everything wide open, no coil taps going on, just everything up. I said I was in a heart tribute band, I'm gonna be filling in in the future. And so I had to give it the Barracuda test. So with decent distortion, it has great sustain. It has the neck through the body. And that's having the distortion at about 50. Could you imagine if it was all the way up, it would sing all day. Here's a huge important factor for me, the front pickup. So if it has what I call the cuppy sound, and that's a really stupid ad adjective, but it's like every time you pick, it's got this <laughs> cuppiness to it. It's so stupid, I know, but it makes sense to me and maybe to some of you. So bridge pickup. Neck pickup. Such a nice rounded sound to it. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn all the coil taps on, hit the reverse phase, go to the middle two pickups, and uh, let's see what it sounds like. Probably a lot of buzz. Sounds like it's broken. Okay, everything back to where it was. That's what I like. One thing I forgot to mention is that this guitar sits really well in your lap. And this part, this huge demon horn, just seems to sit on your lap real nice. I like that. Even if you're sitting classical style, it sits really well. But when you stand up, there's a slight problem, at least in my world. There is really no neck dive. It doesn't go down. Unfortunately, it doesn't stay up either. It wants to find like this really perfect middle range here. And I don't know very many people that play like that. So I kind of wish there was a little bit more weight so that at least it would angle up a tiny bit. But like I said, that's just nitpicking at this point. So to sum up, I really like this guitar. I think out of 10, I would give it 8.5. I love those in-betweens. It's just one of these guitars that I feel is very solid. And at first I wasn't sure, like I said, it made in Korea and all that stuff. And in my lifetime, if you bought a Korean guitar, like when I was a teenager, it meant it was the crappiest thing ever. But things have changed and uh, this feels like a very solid guitar. It has a lot of great features. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be using a lot of these that I can really see in the foreseeable future. But I guess it's nice that they're there for different styles of music. Next time you see it though, you might see it modified quite a bit only because of what I said earlier. I don't wanna accidentally hit things live and all of a sudden wonder what was going on with my guitar. I really hate panicking on stage. All right guys, so that was a brutally honest review of the BC Rich Mockingbird ST. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I've got about 17 more guitars to go in this series and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I love doing the research. I love learning new things about it and I love sharing it with you guys. So, all right, hopefully that was fun. We'll catch you guys later. Bye.